Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 48 today for the British Grand Prix in season three. If you guys did miss the previous episode, hey, chaotic one to say the least at the Austrian Grand Prix then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one we had everything we had virtual safety cars multiple safety cars and even some red flags involved and once again starting a red flag restart on the wrong set of tyres multiple pit stops then as the weather didn't know what it was doing quite and the entire grid didn't know what it was doing and we somehow managed to recover actually from being last place on the wrong tyre at one point to quite a good position fighting for a podium versus the McLarens until it all came crashing down as you would have seen uh, if you watched that episode it was you know for all the action probably the most action we've had actually in one whole episode which I didn't think was possible after the you know after the Monaco Grand Prix um, and, and even the one after that one. We actually left that Grand Prix with zero points scored at the Red Bull Ring and we're 50 points off uh, Oscar Piastri in the Drivers' Championship. Some good news though for the team is us re-signing Pierre Gasly although we did have to spend 11.05 million on him. I tried to actually sign him for his market value and he declined that so I had to go back again for a second day and pay him a little bit extra to to be fair, he has actually been doing quite well versus us where we've had a few wobbly ones, but we are the one that are still leading the team with, you know, in P3 in the championship, 92 points on the board to Gasly, 71, but we need him. We need his consistency that he has, but he has been quite consistent, actually. We do need him because we are still in that fight for the Constructors' Championship, but yeah, in terms of the drivers, 50 points, 50 off Oscar Piastri. Verstappen looks like, you know, he, he if he could get, you know, get some momentum going, he got a third place in Portimao, the win here, it's his second win of the season. I think Verstappen can go and take the challenge to Piastri, and that'll be quite thrilling. Red Bull v McLaren. But for us, I don't know, I asked you guys the question at the end of the last episode, do you really see us getting back into the title fight as an individual? Constructors, I think we definitely can, because both myself and Gasly are scoring well. Bot at, one of the McLarens or Always has a seemingly an issue with it would seem especially in the last few episodes so I think we can close up especially with these upgrades coming through but the driver's title it's going to be up to well well Piastri if he's going to remain that consistent and then we I think we need to go on a bit of a run of form of you know some multiple podiums or race wins but at the moment that seems like a far cry in terms of where the car pace is but Things may get better here in our home Grand Prix because not only do we have the ERS Ultima upgrade coming in, we also, you, you would have seen there, purchase the next two sets of downforce upgrades on front and rear. So it's a large amount of updates. Three upgrades in one race weekend and it's kind of needed because Alpine have brought upgrades. Mercedes as well. McLaren and Red Bull fighting it out with a bit of a mini development race there as they both bring up I think a minor upgrade into Silverstone but it's McLaren that just edge ahead as the best team on paper there's a bit of a gap there to Ferrari and ourselves and Merck are looking to close up to Ferrari although to be fair Ferrari have just been absolutely useless in terms of race strategies and luck etc that they're already behind both of us uh, in the constructors so that's kind of a little bit kind of just uh, doesn't really matter too much it's really just about getting that performance up as much as we can because yeah I think to close the 50 point gap yes Piastri could get unlucky yes Yes, you know, if, if we were to score, let's say, even a second place, you know, if he has a, a bit of a tougher race, that is quite a lot of points. But 50 points with half the season to go, I think we're going to have to hope for like a, a streak of like five podiums in a row uh, and multiple race wins to add to our one win so far this season uh, to, end out the, to end out the year if we want to actually be in that title fight by the end of it. So um, it starts now, I guess it starts now. Let's hope these upgrades are going to be the thing that can see us fighting for a podium here at our home Grand Prix. I would have really have loved to say that the car felt amazing and that was the vibe I was getting, but it seems like the more upgrades I bring to this car, the, w the stiffer it becomes and the less drivable it becomes. And we've had this in the past on F122, F1 2021, even 2020, you know, it, all, all the years we've had the My Team Career Mode as a game mode, um, this generic F1 car, uh, you know, towards the top end, when you're maxing it out, you really have to adjust your driving style 
to the car because there's the card is not lenient in any way of becoming any less stiff or you know very stop start on the brakes when the brake pressure is a bit high and it's uh, it becomes a difficult machine to drive really and it's what you know means that i'm actually hoping that there's a regulation change reset in game obviously i know we have the 2026 engine that we're creating ourselves but in terms of the actual in-game R&D I hope there is a reset so we can actually go down to, to some more kind of you know normal performance levels on the R&D chart and this car becomes a bit more drivable because that was my best lap in Q2 second flying lap fueled up for two my only set of tyres left and it's not enough in our home race we're knocked out in p13 because i used two sets of tires in q1 just to get through into q1 into q2 used i only had one set in q2 left i decided to go for the two lap strategy to try and kind of you know get a bit used to the car uh, and although we did find some time it's not enough gasly makes it through in p7 again there's you know a comfortable gap between myself and gasly over one lap four tenths this time not exactly eight but um you know other big names have been knocked out to be fair with us valtteri bottas in the mclaren lando norris in the red bull so three of us big hitters knocked out in q2 it means you know the likes of ocon are through into the top 10 shootout both mercedes cars both astins um you know one mclaren a piastri both ferraris and verstappen in the red bull gonna have to find out how the top 10 goes uh, as we go to the grid sequence and for us it's a lot of work to do and really wishful thinking that maybe the car is going to feel better in the race because my god it felt awful around there over one lap let's go to the grid for the british grand prix welcome to not only the home of british motorsport but also the birthplace of the formula one world championship it's race day here at Silverstone, a classic on the calendar, and it's time for the British Grand Prix. The 3.6 mile long Silverstone circuit is one of the longest of the season, with 18 corners in the current layout. With average lap speeds reaching around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the quickest tracks of the year. Watch out for cars taking the right-handers of Abbey and of Cobbs flat out. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Mick Schumacher, Oscar Piastri, Verstappen, Sainz, Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Albon, Ocon, Bottas, Ricardo, the owner driver, Norris, Perez, Magnussen, Theo Porsche, Hulkenberg, Sargent, Sonoda, Liam Lawson, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. And it's an absolute pleasure to be joined once more by Anthony Davidson. Let's have a chat about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. So the top two in the championship, Piastri and Verstappen on the back foot as they're uh, relegated to below P3. It's, it's, it's Mercedes and the Ferrari of Leclerc shining. Russell on pole position. Uh, at least one Brit driver having some success at their home race here today. Uh, Leclerc second and then Schumacher in third. That's going to be interesting. Looks like Mercedes, that upgrade they brought, really has made them better. Because for us, not really. I mean, Gasly did make it through into the top ten, but... He wasn't exactly amazingly high, so clearly Mercedes upgrades working better than our upgrades into Silverstone, which is a little bit frustrating because ours include an ultimate ERS upgrade and then uh, two points of downforce. But it is what it is. We've now got to move forward and try and do better in this race, starting on the soft compound along with everyone else outside the top 10, apart from Valtteri Bottas, as we go to five red lights here at Silverstone. The British Grand Prix is underway. It's a good start for us versus is both Alpine cars. A lot of people getting held up off the line. Carlos signs a big name there. Oh, Piastri has made contact with Fernando Alonso. It's an early virtual safety car, but that is the championship leader with a horrid first lap. Front wing off. What did we say? The only way 
we're going to try and get back into this championship fight is the Piastri uh, having some howler races. And maybe this is the first of, uh, well, well I'm, not, I'm not wishing it upon anyone, but, you know, this might be the first of many that might get us back into the title fight. Look at the start for Mick Schumacher. Alonso as well had a flying start. And then actually, ironically, he's the reason Piastri's got no front wing as he kind of uh, squeezes Oscar into turn one along with the Red Bull. And then what an electric start for Mick Schumacher. He's already won a race this season for Mercedes on his return to Formula 1 and now leads the British Grand Prix as his teammate didn't get off the line and actually is now back to where he was. So the two Mercs have swapped basically, one in three. The Ferrari is still in P2 and we're all being held up by Piastri in the middle of Sector 2 because he's got no front wing and Gasly and Albon, well, uh, they tried to overtake him but they're still just getting stuck behind. What are you lads doing? What are you boys doing? As we dive down the inside of both of them, Piastri is now going to hold us up a little bit. Can we get through into the racing line as he now cuts in to the pit lane? So it's going to be a long day in the office for the Australian who pits on lap one with front wing damage, and he had no safety car to reduce that damage, only a virtual one. So he's going to feel the full pain of that extra pit stop as on lap three, we're in clean air, and Gasly is pushing me pretty much through that exit and goes for the overtake with DRS to get up into P6. Even though I'm on the soft compound, he's on medium, he seems to have more pace, just like in qualifying. More pace over us around this circuit, which is frustrating. It's frustrating to have our teammate have more pace than us around our home Grand Prix. Saying that, though, we do come back at him. I, I thought maybe he was going to start charging towards Alonso. Might drag me... Uh, with him, with DRS, didn't happen. We just re-overtook him there on lap four. As it looks like the top five are just DRS training each other and kind of staying ahead by a good three seconds as Schumacher still leads the way. Russell now up into second place, though. It's a one-two for Mercedes, but Leclerc trying his hardest to actually stop that happening and keeping that P2 that he had originally as uh, that may be the worst camera angle in the world. F1 game, lovely. We didn't see it, but Leclerc re overtook Russell for second place. Verstappen right up the chuck of Russell for, for, for P3 there. So the Red Bull getting stuck in. Alonso P5, he's got a five place penalty for that collision he made with Piastri. So that might actually bring him back into play for us once we get to the end of the race. But at the moment, I'm finding it difficult to really close up that much to the top five and break away from Gasly, who is still very much right up my gearbox. And now the tyres are starting to lose out. It's a huge tank slapper, massive, a massive amount of opposite lock needed through the final corner just to keep the car going in a straight line. Thankfully, we haven't lost more positions, but we have lost P6 once again to Gasly as it's the other Ferrari that gets stuck in now. He's the one behind us. Carlos Sainz in P8, Albon P9, and then you've got Bottas falling away out the points pretty much there. So it's a really torrid day for McLaren as uh, Piastri's stoned at last probably this point and uh, Bottas is uh, just about hanging on to the top 10. He's got Lando Norris for company as we go back to the top flight and you know a lot of these drivers not really, you know we've not been used to seeing them fighting for these top spots but it's Leclerc versus Verstappen Verstappen up into P3 but it is a 1-2 for Mercedes and it looks like they have a pretty good thing going you know I think they're both helping each other fending off whoever's in third place as Russell actually gets back past Schumacher to get back Back into P1 since the uh, since the opening of this race, and Leclerc now is falling away. What's happening to Leclerc? It's a cl it's it, well, it's classic Ferrari. We've seen it all this season. No matter how well they start in a race or qualify, they fall away in terms of race pace terms. And Leclerc is now gone from fighting for P2 or maybe the win down to P5 behind Fernando Alonso. As uh, we saw Russell and Schumacher swapping, so could we get a Mercedes fight going on later in this race? That could be pretty tasty. As uh, obviously Russell's yet to win a race this season and his more junior teammate Mick Schumacher has won one. But you can see on lap 10 I've come in this is a little bit earlier than I would have liked but I really just wasn't finding any pace on those soft tyres. Gasly was pulling away from us. I mean, you know, the way he got ahead of us was that mistake we made on the rear end. And that was because of the tyre wear, I think, and the tyre's not really holding on. So we're going early onto the hards, kind of hoping for what we did, 
you know, what was the what was the race? I think a few episodes ago where we went early onto hards and it was night and day performance difference. I think Portima Alto is very similar uh, for that, really. So hoping that once again the hard tire combo with this my team car on F123 is going to save our race a little bit and we can leapfrog Gasly and actually maybe even start to close up towards Alonso and Leclerc, who weren't too far off. And re I'll remember Alonso has that five second penalty for that collision with Piastri. As on lap 12, we come through turn one, overtake the likes of Norris and Ricardo. It's a bit overcast at the moment. Don't think there's any rain, though, uh, forecast for the end of this race, but that may just change the temperatures around the circuit and how the tyres perform. As there's yellow flags behind three cars, a bit slow and wayward. Hulkenberg, Lawson, both slowing down. Logan Sargent retiring out of this Grand Prix. So it seemed like both of those two were held up by the retiring Alfa Romeo Haas as we go on to lap 14. Four whole laps after we've made our pit stop onto hard. And it's going to be a long-term massive undercut as we come out just behind Leclerc at Village. We're ahead of Alonso by four seconds. Without his penalty, he would have been right here, though, to be fair to him. So it, it, it's still a pretty damn decent undercut. An undercut of a, of a good five, six seconds spread over four laps, of course, because that's how many laps we've been on these tyres compared to these guys. As we're now going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Leclerc, we went from left to right now on the inside at Luffield, but the Ferrari is doing really well to defend this. It's actually turning into a really good battle, a classic around Silverstone, banging tyres, getting quite close through these high-speed corners into Cops. We're going to be ahead. And, and we're up into P6, which is very, very decent right now. P4 it'll be once others make their pit stops. Well, Leclerc comes back at us in the village. Big dive to the inside. And again, getting very close to making some contact with our tyres as we are jockeying for position, trying to catch each other out. And with this, this is maybe turning quickly into the most enjoyable battle we've had all race long as Leclerc squeezes us into the left-hander. We come back at him. He kind of gets an elbow out and juts ahead at the apex for P4. We're actually going to sit back because I know we can have the run into Cops. Again, going to go to the inside. It's a little bit closer this time. We're going to have to let off and give Leclerc the room side by side on the exit as we run towards Maggot and Beckett. But we are going to be the one who gets there first. Leclerc very close though and he maybe thought about getting his nose in through to the inside. But an exquisite battle going on here for P4. But if we continue to fight like this, this may just invite Gasly to close up to us. He's currently 2.9 behind. We go defensive at the end of this straight to try and maintain the P4. Where is Leclerc in the mirrors? I think we've got him covered so far as up the road, Verstappen looks to try and do anything to pressurise the two Mercs. So it's still 1-2. Schumacher leads, but Russell is going to try and change that on the outside to the inside for Luffy. Is he going to do it? I think he has. He's driven right round the outside of his teammate to get into the lead. Verstappen so close by. Look at the dot on the minimap as we continue to fight Leclerc and we've got it all crossed up though into Luffield. I was trying to float the car and kind of dance it almost to the inside of the Ferrari and instead our back end is stepped out. We've had a howler there, you know, the third time's a charm for Leclerc and he's got the overtake now. He kind of uh, pushed us into a mistake there with how ferocious he was with the attacks. We've re-overtaken our teammate, but we've now got to dust ourselves off and try and re-engage with Alonso, who is a lot quicker of a man to overtake than Gasly. Is Gasly actually falling away down now below Valtteri Bottas, but both of them are still very much right behind us. So this is becoming a five car fight here from P4 down to P8. This is going to be quite tense towards the end. Six laps to go. I feel like Alonso is waiting for his chance to make a move. And yes, there it is. Alonso on the inside. <laughs> that is so, so close. Alonso and Leclerc nearly make contact into Magnus Beckett. Alonso going the long way around for exquisite overtake. But we're going to do the double and get them with DRS. And through we come into P4 once again. Alonso comes back at us though, but we have 
have the exit covered and will go defensive to the inside to make sure he's not going to try anything funny with his switch back. But there goes Bottas. He's decided to do his own little switch back on Alonso and he's managed to find himself in P5 now. He's come out of nowhere really because he was kind of floundering in you know just P10 or P11. Is Schumacher now from the lead on lap 24 locks up the pressure is got to the German and Russell is into the lead of the British Grand Prix with only well uh, uh, two laps to go once they end this one Verstappen second place Schumacher closing back up though he's actually already underneath one second of Verstappen so he well could come back at these two drivers it's not over yet and it's not over for ourselves as we look to defend either Alonso or Bottas it'll be Alonso Alonso gets ahead of the Finn we go very defensive to make sure we get ahead Alonso slows up and backs into Bottas Oh, controversy, drama. Late on into this British Grand Prix, Alonso has basically brake-checked Bottas there and broken his front right tyre to Howler for McLaren in their home race. They'll score zero points as now Gasly on the second last lap. He's been really nowhere this entire stint. He's been kind of just sitting back in about P7. He's now gone and overtaken us and caught us napping a little bit here as we try and come back at him wheel to wheel close stuff on the left hand side but the problem is as we're fighting as we're banging tires in towards the last half of the Grand Prix I can see Alonso lurking behind and my team owner brain kicks in look Piastri he's at the point so I'm already getting a lot of good points on the championship leader for free here I think we're gonna we're gonna take the hit and we're gonna we're gonna hang back behind Gasly to try and make sure we finish in this P4 and 5. I'd rather have 4 and 5, me being 5th place, than us having 4 and 6, me being 4 and Gasly being 6. Because this is not just about the Drivers' Championship. We obviously want to close up on McLaren and the Constructors. And they're both now not scoring any points. So this is massive for our constructors for is Alonso actually nearly overtakes me but we just have the measure to re-overtake him into the towards the last couple of corners but Mick Schumacher take a bow let's uh, hang on let's mention him for a second Mick Schumacher wins his second race of this season he's leading the Mercedes team pretty much now I know Russell has more points but he's coming alive now with his second win in only what was it three races incredible stuff there for the German in the Mercedes car it's a howler for McLaren and it's a pretty solid day in the office for both of us. Plenty of action here at Silverstone, a memorable race and an impressive victory. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take the top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Big, big shift in the office for Mick Schumacher. We didn't quite catch when the overtake was made because we had our own battles going on at the same time with Alonso and Gasly. But Schumacher, despite the lockup, comes back and overtakes Verstappen and George Russell. Russell actually, in the end, uh, at some point, then lost out to Verstappen as well. So it wasn't just Schumacher overtaking it was Russell making a mistake somewhere to go back down below Verstappen but it's a Mercedes 1-3 that's big for them big for us to get the 4-5 a lot of us even Red Bull with just Verstappen in, in second place with 18 points versus zero for McLaren a lot of us are going to gain a lot of points on the Papaya team. Um, yeah, Bottas out the Grand Prix after that brake check from Fernando Alonso. And Piastri never really looked back after lap one. And it me Oh, my God. Wow. I didn't realize it was going to be that big of a swing. Verstappen, what did I say? He could definitely close up to Piastri. He's now three points off the Australian. So we have a title fight. It's between Piastri and Verstappen at the moment. We're still 39 points off. 
the lead. That seems a little bit more doable now, thinking about it. You know, seven races to go, 39 points, but it's still going to take a hell of a lot. Uh, it's still going to take a hell of a lot in terms of, you know, Piastri is going back to scoring decently for the remainder of the season. We are going to have to get the car even quicker to be able to actually attack him properly. And unfortunately, even though we got a solid P4 and 5 today, the car really didn't feel good. This My Team car, like previous games, it just feels worse the more you upgrade it, which is very, very odd uh, to say, but it's just the way it is. So we've got an interesting, uh, you know, next couple of races on the way to see, you know, where this car is going to fit in. You know, maybe it just was a bit of an off, off track for the car. We'll see, we'll see. But guys, if you have enjoyed the episode, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly full-on content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.